Hi guys, welcome to another tutorial and uh, today we are going to do uh, a nice loose uh, winter scene with a house in it. I've never done one of these before but keeping with the Christmas tree theme for this week we're gonna go ahead and do something loose and cute and pretty um, and so there's gonna be a little bit of sketching involved so I just have my pencil and I'm just gonna kind of place my house um, where I want it to be. So this way when I'm actually painting, I don't kind of lose track of where it is and then paint over it. So I'm just gonna have, um, I'm gonna do it off to the side over here. And so we're gonna do a very basic triangle. just like that and then once we have that we're just gonna do a close the triangle up and then do a rectangle or a square whatever floats your boat and then uh, I'm just going to add another line for the roof here just kind of get it so we're just pretty much making the uh, red, uh, the triangle thicker and having that extend down and then closing that up and then uh, finally we are going to just roughly draw in the um, the door now maybe this is not a house maybe this is like a barn and let's see and since this is like a barn door we're just gonna kind of create Some very loose, basic, uh, I guess like a barn door design. And you can just kind of follow suit as you can see me drawing this in, so that's okay. And I'm just going to give it a couple of windows. So more rectangular shapes. I'll just give it three, I think. And then, uh, because this is like a barn door, uh, sorry, barn style structure that we're creating, I'm just going to add these linear lines to indicate the wood. I don't know if I want to do it all the way down for the whole house because that might be too much detail. And like I mentioned earlier, I just want to keep this light and uh, fun. So I might just leave it at that and let's see how that turns out. All right, so we have our house and now we're kind of going to go ahead and create, um, like do the painting is what I was trying to say. So for the painting, this is what we are going to be needing. So for the painting, I'm going to be using the following brushes, my Silver Black Velvet in the 8, the Da Vinci in 1, and the Silver Black Velvet in the 4. And then for colors, um, I'm going to have the rooftop of the house in red. So for that, I'm going to be using my Carmen. Uh, feel free to use a red that you like for the brown bits in the house. I'm going to be using a variation of uh, the sepia and uh, the Mars Brown. These are my go-to colors for the holiday season. Uh, I'm also going to keep some black on the side in case I need some for shadows. Uh, and then for the skies and the trees in the background, I am using uh, my cobalt blue, 
um, umber green and I have some azure here as well so these are my four for the background all right and uh, these are all um, watercolors by St. Petersburg White Knights um, and yep I think we are ready to begin so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the background and I just noticed before we um, kind of use our number one mop brush to get into the background I just want to do a uh, line indicating the horizon almost sort of like where the house is we might not use up the whole space but I'm just using that there and um, yeah so that's where we have that we will give it a little bit of snow as well here and there so I just want to add a light area of where the snow would be and this way when we are painting we're not kind of painting in that area and we're gonna paint around it so I'm just giving some light areas where you can like it's like snow build up or whatever you want to call it happening all right okay so I think that's enough and we are going to start with the background now so I'm using my number one and I am going to just start off by adding a nice layer of water just around the house. All right, and so now that I have this layer, I'm going to go in with my number eight, and I'm going to get my umber first, and I am going to turn this around, and using the tip, oops, I need some more umber. Using the tip, I'm going to just let the color run. And notice I'm trying to not get into the house too much. And now once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and get some of the green and add some of that. In here. And I'm going to darken some of this. And then just kind of like do a couple of strokes to kind of indicate the flow. and give it a nice background. All right, so now once I have this, I am going to just kind of move the water around so it goes in all the different areas. And then I'm just gonna extend with water so that it kind of goes up. And then once I have that, I am going to add a swoosh of water at the top. Just at the top. And now I'm going in with my azure. Or and just adding that on there at the top. All right, and now once I have that, I can just extend it over. And I'm adding additional water onto this end and we're going to kind of mimic the exact same thing that we did there, here. 
Whoops, got some onto the house top there. And just extending the water down this way. And now once I have that, we're going back in. Notice I just kind of reverted to using the number eight. Uh, my first thing is the umber that I'm using. Make sure you have more color on here because there's enough water on the sheet so you can get a nice uh, flare of color as you're adding this on. And spread it out, spread it out. Just like do a couple of strokes here and there. And now once I have that, I'm going in with my green. Exactly like how we did the previous one, I'm just running it along this area and having it bleed into what we have here. Just like that. And then I am just adding some water at the top and having this bleed at the top and then going in with my azure I'm just adding a couple of dabs of the blue and then just taking some of this light blue that I have and I want to just give it just a few tad bits of blue at the top so it looks like this now okay and I'm just using water to kind of smoothen it out and have it go all around and we're good all right so now that I have this I'm gonna go in with my with my umber first so now this is imperative because while this is drying, this is like the perfect dryness right now. We're going to go in and do the trees. And so for that, I'm just going to start off by doing a line. And then a couple of strokes outward. And then going downward and then just adding these little bits that indicate like it's a tree. My umber is starting to look like a brown for some reason. And you want it to happen while this is still damp because then it gives you that nice, beautiful seeping in happening. And I'm going to fluctuate between the umber and the green um, just so I can get nice variations of both colors happening as we go down. And create the rest of the tree. And it's almost like it is in the background and you have this nice foliage of green happening. And you can have a different variation or a lighter variation of this color and just kind of go very lightly. And we're doing the same motion for a bit. I'm just creating the same ideas on repetition. And some will look like they're in the background, some will look like they're in the foreground. And you're just going down and adding little tidbits of color while this area is still damp. And notice how it gives us a nice, beautiful flare as we're doing this. Uh, and then what I would suggest is just the tip of it always make it darker so that you can see where it starts off and then it kind of blends in with everything else in the background and this is where the uh, mixture of the two colors will help differentiating the trees from one another 
and leaving some space in between as well. All right. So just kind of keep going along as you do this. And you can have some darker, some lighter. So I'm kind of mixing my colors directly within for this. I just want to start off darkest at the top, lighter as you kind of go down. And you can just use water even to kind of have things move about and create a nice watery effect. And then we're kind of going to use the same method that we've used there. In this area here, it's kind of dried up already. So you're going to see the difference now in how it looks for an area that's dried up versus an area that we have just used that's been damp. So I'm literally just dabbing my brush to like create these tree looking structures. And then just taking another variation of the same color and I am creating the same motion. Just giving a couple of areas darker tones and some lighter to indicate light and shadow. And then just possibly even going in with the same light color and then creating other trees of similar nature. And then just remembering to kind of use the same colors that we have to kind of mix and give it some in interesting textures and uh, variations. Tie it all in. And see now that we this area is kind of dried, however, because we are using, uh, we're doing the layering method here. It's kind of giving us that similar effect that we have here. And I'm going to use one more here. I'll give this area a break over here, like as if there's a break in the woods. And I'm extending all the way down for these darks. Here's one way of doing it. Just kind of creating your line and then going down certain areas to create the tree. And then you can go in with your umber and just dipping the tip of your brush in water, just continue creating the same motion in hopes that it'll create a nice full tree that kind of looks like a pine. And then always like at the base, just use water to kind of smoothen things out and blend it in. Uh, and this is just so that it kind of looks like it's in the background and it is nice and like dreamy. And uh, yeah. This is the whole essence of how you would do one of those Christmassy scenes. And now I'm just doing one in the background. Very, very faint, very light, very minimalistic, almost like leaving to your imagination what it looks like. And there we go, we have that. Okay, so I'm gonna let that 
do its thing for a bit before we go in and do anything else. But uh, the next thing we're going to do is create the bottom. And for that, again, we will use the mop brush to put a layer of color first. And by color, I mean water. <laughs> Sorry. So, okay, so I have my brush. I'm going to leave that area white. And I'm going to just <clears throat> put in the water. And paint all of that in there. Now that I have that, <clears throat> going with my number eight, I will get some of the azure and I am going to add that as the base here. And I'm just kind of doing swooshes of it. All around. And then I'm also going to get some of the green that we have. And I'm just adding it onto this part. And if you have some of the green from the trees kind of blending down, that's a great idea. You should totally allow that to happen. Otherwise, you can cheat and just take some green and add it yourself. Since this area is like damp. But uh, make sure you're also doing some of the blue because you want to have that reflection of the blue as well from the sky and the snow. And then this is pretty much like indicative of shadow. Just washing my brush and just moving this color around so it's not too dark. All right, so there we go, we have that. And then the next thing we're gonna do is start in with our painting of the house. So I realize it needs to blend, sorry, dry a bit. So I'm just gonna do some mixing of the trees to make sure that the trees are more to my liking while this area kind of dries up for us. And in fact, you know what? We could probably, because there's just enough dampness for the trees happening here, we can go in and continue with finishing the trees off. And um, for this one here, I'm going to take some of the umber that I have. And mix that in with some of the green. And I'm just going to add in another layer of color. So we're doing the same motion, but with a slightly darker tone of color and this is just to bring in some nice interesting details and make it more realistic looking so notice I'm doing it like almost like in a circular motion around as I go downward because that's what technically the trees would look like. And then again, I'm doing the same thing for this tree. Darkest at the top and then kind of just highlighting areas as you go along.
You know, I might even try using some of that blue in there. Let's see what that looks like. Although the blue mixed with the green would look quite dark. So it might just look like a dark green or like a teal, which would also work. But we're using the same colors in our painting and the whole idea is to have it merge and look like one cohesive unit. All right, so you see how the second layer is really making things pop. And I'm just gonna add a couple of dark spots here. And some here, and then really go in the center on this one here, because it's already dark enough. All right, there we go. So we've done that. And I will just finish off this one. So if you've worked on this week's uh, tutorial from Thursday, you are definitely getting your money's worth with the whole dabbing and creating these leaves or these trees because we did a whole lot of that on Thursday. Or at least for the Thursday tutorial, you might have tried it on a different day. Um, but yeah. So there we go. Almost kind of done with this. Uh, we'll do this one here. I'm trying to make the ones that are just juxtaposition next to the house a lot darker just so that it looks like it's shadowed because of the house. So that's why I'm going darker over here. In more areas than one. And then again, we'll do this one here. And this one I'm mixing a little bit of the umber. And I'm gonna be sporadic in how I where I place, I guess, the color here, just in certain areas, just in the center. just there all right so we are done with this and now we can do the house and hopefully the house is um, dry enough that we can do it so let's go there all right so first things first I will do the um, brown area for the wood first and so I'm going to be using a bit of my Mars brown and I'm just going to mix it onto the side so that it's easy for me to kind of get it and I want it on the consistency where there's more water less color sort of situation and here's why because as I paint this on I want to go in with my with my darker brown and I want to be able to darken areas and as I'm doing this I'm going to try and add it in a manner where I'm able to leave white space And white spaces so that it can indicate, oh, here's where there's some snow happening. If that makes any sense. So I'm just kind of going up, going along. So the guides, the pencil, uh, the pencil markings really help me because now I can see um, where the lines are and I can accordingly leave some white space 
And I'm just going to keep on dragging the color down. And I don't want to go on top of the windows either. So this would require a little bit of detailed, intentional brush strokes as opposed to our usual loose ones. All right, so now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and get some of the dark brown, which is the sepia, and I'm just going to mix it onto the side. Okay, this is not a dark brown, guys. This is a black. I am clearly blind. I'm going to get the sepia for sure this time, and I'm putting that onto the side. Yep, it is the sepia. So... I want to put stuff onto the edges of it so it kind of seeps in and does its watercolor mixing thing. Same thing here and I'm just going to continue going downward hoping that it'll give us that nice flow and it is. So to the edges, obviously it will be darker compared to the rest. And just keep going. The same motion. And now actually I'm going to just using the tip for black, I'm going to add some to the side because I want it to be darker. And I'm just adding bits here and there. And hopefully once it dries, it doesn't look quite as harsh. Uh, but yes, we'll continue on and do the rest of it. Now we've reached the barn door. So I'm kind of going to try my best to kind of go around it. leaving white space, making sure we're not touching like the snow areas that we kind of loosely drew in. And then same thing here. So if you get a little bit sloppy here, it's fine. It's allowed because it's like still a uh, very much so a loose style of painting uh, so now I'm getting a little bit of the black and I'm just gonna add it to the sides and just to the tops just allowing it to kind of seep into the brown that we've just laid down. And yep, yeah, there we go. So we have a nice blend of color. You can actually go in after the fact, like after it's a little bit dry and just add a tad bit more uh, like darker colors if you want to oops kind of close this area up here a bit all right 
I'm going to leave this as is. So there we go. That's the barn. And now we can do the, uh, the red top. So for the red top, just, uh, just like we did for the, the wooded area, I'm going to be using my number four and getting some of my Carmen and I'll just mix some of that Carmen. Actually, you know what? I don't want the Carmen. I want the Matter Lake red because I want a nice darker red. So I use, use some of the Carmen already. And I'm just mixing some of the Matter Lake red onto my palette. And I will turn this around so I can get to my roof without it being in the middle of things that are damp. So I'm going to try and leave some white space again. Um, and this is to indicate the snow. So white space in between like the house or the wooded area of the house and the roof. And then just paint it along. Now these areas just be extra careful like don't breathe as you're painting them just because that one tiny breath could make you go off a little bit. So I'm actually bending down for this. There we go. So I think I managed to get it pretty, pretty on point. Which is good and now what I will do is I'm going to take a little bit of black and I'm just using literally the tip of my brush and getting some black in with the red and I am going to add some of that while it's still damp just on the edge. And at the bottom. And it just like gives it a nice pop. There we go. Okay. So it's no longer like flat looking, but it looks pretty good. And I like it. So great. All right. So um, uh, for those of you who may have not been able to get white space in between, uh, don't worry. We can fix that by using gouache and our number four, or even using a Sharpie if you have something. And we can achieve our white through that. Um, what's left is the, we're going to let that dry, we're, we're going to do the barn door for now, and then revert back to the top. Alright, so for the barn door, I am definitely going to be using a very muted version of our, of our Mars Brown, which I kind of already have on there. So what I'll do first is, making sure that everything is dried up, I'm going to put in water, just a lay of water on here. And I know I said leave some white space in between the barn door pieces of wood happening, but uh, if you can't, that's okay. And I don't have the patience right now. Uh, most of you know, I like to do my paintings fairly quickly. So I'm gonna get a little bit of my Mars Brown and then I'm just adding it in this area and just letting it kind of spread around. 
And so you see some areas are lighter, some are darker. I'm going to let this dry for a bit before we go in and add some shadowy effects. Or actually, you know what, before we do, before we kind of, I'm just going to add a little bit of the sepia. Just in like the corners so that as the Mars Brown is settling in, the sepia is kind of blending in with it. So there we go. So now we have like two tones. So we'll let that be for now. And uh, we will just kind of do some of the um, the snow areas. And then I think we are good to go. Okay, so for the snow areas, I'm going to be using some of my uh, Azure Blue. And so we've got some snow happening here. And I know there's like green on top. We probably should have had a little bit more blue happening there, but that's okay. Um, I'll just take some of the azure that we have using the number four. And I'm just going to have a very tiny bit of it happening on top. So it looks like a shadow almost. And then we'll go in with water and just smoothen it out. So I've washed off the color and I'm going in with water and I'm smoothening out the blue. So it's like a blue halo around the house. And then I also want to give some of that blue halo look here. And then again, like I did previously, just taking water and smoothening it out. And I'm just going to take a tad bit more, very tiny bit. If you have a thinner brush, I would suggest using a thinner brush for something like this. So you can get just the edges and a good enough flare as you're kind of laying this down. These little details really, really make up and enhance the, uh, the, the whole painting or any kind of watercolor, really. I'm going to do some on the side here, too. I don't feel like it's really, really needed, but just while we're waiting for things to dry up, I'm just going to kind of highlight certain areas here. There we go, and that's that. And we're pretty much done, with the exception of adding more detail to the to the little windows and then the door, and then I think we are good to go. Okay, so for the windows on the inside, I'm going to add some of the azure blue that we've been using so that it looks like it's reflecting from the skies. And using the number four again, I'm going to try and paint the insides and leave a white border around. And then I'm just dabbing color to make it slightly 
more prominent. There we go. So we have our blue windows. And then um, uh, we are going to be doing our barn door detail. So for the barn door, again, I'm using my sepia. I'm using my number uh, four brush. I am going to go ahead and create these little lines that outline the wood on the door. Instead of just painting them in, I'm just kind of giving them an outline wherever I can, that is. Like see this this one I try to give it an outline, but you need a way tinier, like you need a really tiny brush for this. And I am just using my basic for, there we go. So we've given it that and I think it looks pretty good. Um, we're gonna allow this to dry for a bit. Actually before that, what I wanna do is give it a, give the door like a once over on the inside just want to make sure that this is all dry. So I'm just adding a line. There we go. I think that's good enough. Should have probably added a mound of snow on the front here because it looks kind of abrupt that's okay we will work something with the gouache because the gouache is going to come next um, before I quickly do the gouache I just want to add it add some faint azure blue trees in the background so I'm using some of my azure um, that I have on here and I'm just going to add some very faint looking trees in the background so we're doing the same thing that we did when we first laid down the trees and just making these a lot more fainter and they will dry fainter too so no worries Like literally just peppering these areas. Uh, let's give one happening here. And then some more here. And then just some in the background as well, like maybe just like one in the back of the tree, uh, sorry, the house. And then uh, really uh, just add them wherever you feel like you need to add them. I'm just going to add one here as well. Uh, 
Oh, really liking how this is looking, guys. I hope you guys like it too. Wait till we go in with the uh, with the gouache and the snow bits. Snowfall, rather. You don't have to layer them. I'm just kind of adding some extra detail. Okay, so there we go. So I think this is good for now. We can uh, now go in with some of our gouache and add some some snow. Okay, so I have some gouache mixed up over here. And what I'm going to do is just get it onto my number four and then right away I am going to do a spray actually let's do it in the right way adding it to the trees to the house getting some more can't see much of it onto the sky because obviously our sky is very very light had we made it darker at the top it probably would have been more prominent but I wanted to have the green trees and so that's why I didn't want to have a dark sky because then that would be a bit much so we have a nice faint splatter of this happening but now you can kind of go in and add your added bigger chunks. You can either use your Sharpie or you can continue to use gouache. I have both. Let's see if the Sharpie actually works. Because I know sometimes it takes a while to like... Oh, it is working. Yay! But I think it's also getting like absorbed so I might need to uh, use the gouache after all if it's just going to disappear in the uh... I don't want it to just disappear into the uh, into the color, so I might have to use some gouache. Let's see. It's not too bad. Yeah, we get the idea. You can see it. Just going to add a whole bunch here and there. Peppering, peppering the trees with some snow. In fact, the ones closer to the house, I think I'm going to try and add more snow. And let's just see what that looks like.
like maybe just like hanging out onto the leaves or the spine, uh, spine or the branches. So this is one way of doing it. And just have some on the edges as well here. So it looks like a nice powdery snowbank or snow edge and then kind of just go along I guess because technically this is all snow here so if you give it like a nice dotted edge fading off into the blue area it might look like a nice Christmassy scene So literally just peppering this whole area with white, white little sharpie dots. And if you don't have these, then like I said, use, use your gouache and uh, that should work too. Now I'd like the, I would like the white to be a lot more potent. But uh, clearly it's not, it's taking a while to kind of trickle down and so the variations of white I don't mind. So I am using it. So if you want a more potent white, then uh, I think gouache would be your best bet. All right, so you guys get the idea, right? So this is pretty much the idea of how I would do the Christmas scene or a nice holiday scene with a barn. I didn't add any animals. And I do feel like maybe I should have planned for a deer or something happening so that it would look less bare. But uh, I don't mind it because I am also a big believer in less is more and I love white space so I think this works just as well so um, once this is dried up entirely I'm going to erase it and we should have our painting so hope you guys enjoyed this thanks so much for watching let me know in the comments what you guys thought uh, send me your images on Instagram and Facebook I love hearing from you guys thanks so much for watching guys and uh, please feel free to share this in your social media circles if you liked it. So thanks and we'll chat soon. Bye.